Welcome to a new episode of Creative Talks, a series in which we get to know creative minds and bodies alike. We are at the end of the fourth day, we're still sweaty, and we're training with Edivaldo Ernesto. Really honored to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. So I'm going to have to start with a basic question. Please tell me shortly, who are you? <laughs> and how did you become what you are? Well, my name is Edivaldo Ernesto. I am from Mozambique, um, I'm currently based in Germany, in Berlin, uh, since 2007. Uh, I am a dancer, a choreographer, um, and performer, and we can go on mm -hmm. <laughs> with mm -hmm. those titles. Uh, yeah, um, and I'm a, a developer of the methods uh, improvisation depth movement. All right. So let's talk about uh, this depth movement of yours. Can you please tell me how did you arrive at this principle? What, uh, what does it mean? How does it progress maybe? And do you still find satisfaction in it? Yes. Um, one of, the, one of the, uh, the things that I, or that made me um, arriving to it, it was because I was missing something. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm one of those artists uh, that loves physicality, right? Uh, movements, physical. And when I was uh, working with Sasha in the productions, I wanted to sweat a little bit and you know, be a bit warmer before uh, starting a creation. Yeah. And so I would step on the side and I would just dance improvise and try to look for other ways of moving, uh, maybe creating a, um, a different languages, and most important, try to get rid of that energy that, I, that was condensed mm -hmm. so that I could start the creation a bit more uh, fresh. Yeah. And uh, there, therefore, like the whole thing started to um, being created. I didn't think I was creating something at the time. I was just working on like my body and trying to uh, increase my uh, skills and imagination and improvisation, yeah. challenging and then uh, with working with the rhythms, um, uh, timings. It was all that until um, one of the, the colleagues said, wow, well, was asking me, what, what is this you're doing? Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, I'm just dancing and so on. And, and I saw that call it eventually one moment copy what I was doing. And that was the first click that I had that it was possible to, to transmit. Yeah, basically, basically that was the beginning of the construction. But to say um, what uh, it is, basically it's a collision of a lot of disciplines. And I try as much as possible not to close it uh, or, or, or to restrict it. Um, we can, you can apply one movement from flamenco inside, from cramp, from ballet, from um, uh, capoeira, yes. from football, and gestures that you do uh, when you are talking in the streets and, and also, um, when you're cleaning uh, at your home, when you're cooking, uh, all those elements or movements, I would say also, they are welcome uh, into the work. And what we do with them is we, we, we shape a little bit, but not that it becomes a choreography, but it becomes something that it can be translated to the outside um, uh, 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 like a language. And it's very important that everyone uh, projects their own experience, meaning yes. whatever they live, they live or they live in their countries, their house. We all clean, I believe, but we all clean differently. So that's mm -hmm. when uh, everyone else brings their own personality inside. It's fascinating because by its nature, like the, the workshop, uh, it remains fresh, it always transforms, because it is not a style, right? Right. It's just a collection of tools, as you said, so it's... 
I think this is why uh, everybody is so eager to do what we do. It's so happy to do it because it's discovery. Mm. It's just you add everything you know and you create something new. Right. So do you still find satisfaction in I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Not all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, life. It's just like life. You know, there's, there's some moments that you're not so happy because you projected something, you know, or you had a goal and you don't reach. And there are moments that um, you reach that goal and you, you even pass it. And it's so, it's so amazing. But what I find more, more, uh, I would say ground in it and, and what makes me also want to continue is that it doesn't give me a, 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 a possibility or, or I would say it's an endless thing. And the more you do it, the more you even fail, the more you see more possibilities. Yeah. And that's what makes me want to continue doing it and doing it and doing it. And so far, I, I'm kind of like trapped in something that I, it, it's just going. And I like it. That's why I like it because, it, it, you know, it, you find it ref refreshing in there. Yes. And it, 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 it's not really a matter of uh, are you happy or you're not happy. It, it's a lot on... It's, it's constantly happening. It's constantly happening. Some days you're super happy, you're extremely happy, and some days you're just disappointed. And both still makes you wanna, you know, discover more because you get disappointed and you still see that, wow, I could reach that, I could yeah, reach that. Yeah. Yeah. Were you actually teaching before you formed this depth movement too? Yes, um, before depth movement, there was a class called Next Level. Next Level. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in that class, it was basically uh, one hour and a half. Okay. And it, it, I, it was, um, I, I would consider it kind of like a warm up class, right? You come and you, you know, you train a, a, a bit, you get warmer, and then you go do other things. So I was teaching uh, that. But then in one moment, I thought, I don't want to warm up people. I want to give something to them that they can go out and develop way further. Not that the warming, warming up of giving, or giving that uh, warm up to people is a bad thing. It's just that I, I didn't feel it was something that I wanted to keep on doing. So I, I put next level on the side and then I started to focus more in the depth movement. And the more I, I enter in it, there was no way to go back. Yeah. So I, I could just go forward. And at the end, I was really happy but they were similar as approach? Um, in terms of energy, yes. Uh, Next Level had a lot of um, 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 influences of Flying Low okay, from yeah. David Zambrano that we, we have worked um, um, since 2003 until present day. Um, mm -hmm. We work together with David. So he created a technique and I learned from him <coughs> um, from that day until today. And and so my idea was to um, take the flying low information or principles and apply it the way I was improvising it when I was free. That's what I say, yeah, I would maybe call it next level, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just, you know, bringing those um, uh, systems that I had, um, uh, taking a reference of flying low and then kind of like composing few phrases Flying lower. <laughs> Even lower. Maybe. I, I'm not so sure if Zambrano would, uh, you know, uh, agree with that. But <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 it went that direction. And in fact, I was re really happy with what was happening with Next Level. But it's just that when I had that click that I said, ah, I think I need something more than, mm -hmm. than just setting phrases in passing and so on. I was looking more for systems and strategies. And in, I, in that moment, I found quite a lot. So you mentioned David Zambrano. He was one of your mentors, I guess, and colleagues. Mm. And maybe, yeah, partners. Could you uh, please tell us a bit about, the, about this relationship? How did you meet him? Yeah. I met David Zambrano in Mozambique. He went to Mozambique to teach in a program uh, organized by an institution called Cultura, Cultura Art in Mozambique. Okay. And he was uh, part of that um, 
uh, he was one of the teachers that would be coming to teach in a certain period. Uh, I think the, this program had a six month of um, uh, uh, workshops, workshops, and then at the end creation. And um, Zambrano, David Zambrano, came with uh, with his partner Matt, Matt Wurter, and they arrived uh, in the middle part of the the program. And I remember the first time he entered in the studio. He has a he had this you know mustache, the mustache, yeah. very funny one. And I looked at him, and then he walks through and he says, "Don't look at me, my mustache. Look at me." And I just went like, "Okay." <laughs> and uh, we started the the class, and the more the class was going in the first day, I was like, "Wow, this is nice. This is really, really nice." And then we did a little bit of passing through, which is another work of Zambrano, and that's when I went, "Okay, that's what I was looking for." And to be honest, the passing through, what I felt with the passing through uh, back then, it's what I try to I try to bring also to the depth movement, which is you know a game or a, a way that you can play that it just evolves. Mm -hmm. There is no really a, a limit. There is no end. You can always find an option. So that was one of the the things that I took also from that Zambrano's work into depth movement. So. Um, that uh, went, went through the, 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 the work in Mozambique, and then um, we got quite close with Zambrano. There were some, some people that were quite close to him, and Zambrano is amazing because he always liked to be with the people. And, and we, we were just, you know, what, we just wanted also to be close to him because he was so amazing. I mean, he is so amazing. And at the end of that stage, he tells me, uh, if I have a lot of money, I will invite you to come and work with me in Europe. And then I said, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, I look at him and I said, no, 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 I'm not so sure. And I think uh, one or two months later, he sent me an email, you know, starting the, the conversations to make that happen. Yeah. And still then I didn't believe until I was on the plane. <laughs> that's the, the story with Zambrano at the beginning. And from there on, it just we just you know took it took it farther. You knew you were gonna move to Europe like uh, fully back then, or it was just a work trip. I remember that I wanted to work in Europe. This was very clear. And when I I, I came to Europe, I said uh, I need to be super responsible, and I need to be on top of my um, uh, game. Yeah. Because if I if I mess something out, then that's it. And this is my chance to get connected with the people. And I'm working with Zambrano, and so I should I should stay really focused in the work and everything, um, you know, that is related to the purpose that I was going there. And uh, I did the first work. I hated Europe. I wanted to go back because <laughs> we arrived we arrived in Amsterdam, and then we went to Brussels. And it was raining and cold. It was just completely different world. And Mozambique in uh, in that period, which was October, it was um, summer, beginning of the summer. So I was like, I want to be in my country. And yeah, it, it doesn't feel so good being here in the cold, but the work was amazing. So I was happy with that. But when, as soon as I would go out, uh, sadness. <laughs> but, and then, when I felt that, that what the work could give, I forgot about the weather. I forgot about the weather in Mozambique. And then I just went, okay, yeah, we're yeah. working and we, you know, <laughs> we're going to try to find a you know, way to adapt to, to these conditions of mm -hmm. like, that Brussels at, at, at that time. And then um, after that work, I, we did the performances. And, uh, and then Zambrano said to me, oh, yeah, uh, I would like to invite you also to come to Impulse Dance. It's a, um, um, a festival. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. A festival with a lot of workshops and you will learn, you will meet people there. Um, um, and Zambrano was at that time what they call it, a, I think, a coach. I think they were calling it a coach. Mm -hmm. And I, was, um, I got a scholarship for Dance Web. Oh, yeah. So that was my actually the intense training that I had. 
How old were you back then? <laughs> like how oh, much no. time was this? Yeah. <laughs> I think 19 or 19. 20. I don't know. I think 19 or 20. Wow. Yeah, something like that. That was lucky. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah, but yeah. I think you deserve it. Yeah. yeah, some things begin from there. You're lucky and then you have to shape yeah, it. You have and to and I, I had your luck. Yes, I had so many reasons also to to fail. Mm -hmm. But I, I also I decided, I said to myself, every opportunity counts. And so the first one led to to the impulse stance, and the impulse stance led, led to another one. And and then that's how I met Sasha. After the impulse stance, Sambrano um uh, tells, I think he communicated with Sasha, and then they were gonna do an improvisation together. And then they invited me to join that improvisation. So who is Sasha Waltz? You're in the company. <laughs> yeah. uh, how do you feel being uh, in the company in the first place? How, how, how is the work in the company? And uh, what's the work there? What do you, what's the aesthetics? What's the objectives usually? Mm -hmm. Where do you perform? Sasha Waltz is a, it's a, uh, um, um, a choreographer from Germany and she's well known also in 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 the dance uh, community she's she's uh, she's a you know a, a person that has been collaborating with, uh, in the dance community for quite uh, no for a long time yeah. i would say and she's uh, she has amazing works also and i got the chance to improvise with her uh in the 2007 and then i i remember we had to perform one of the pieces from zambrano uh i think that was soul project in Berlin, and Sasha was, uh, I think they were premiering uh, Dido, 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 and Dido and NNS, and it's it's an opera. Uh, and then we met uh, in the, one of the, 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 they did the premiere, we did the premiere in another place, and then we we met in, in this place called Radial System, and there was a party in there. And with Sasha, there was like, like every time we met, there was really nice energy. There was like, like nice, um, open openness, and then uh, after the show with Zambrano, she tells to Zambrano, I, "I would like to speak with Eddie Valdo. And then I, uh, Zambrano told me we went together. We had a lunch at her place, and then she mentioned that oh, I, I would like I'm bringing back one of the pieces from 1987, and I think you would be good at it. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I wonder if you're interested. And I said, Yeah, well, <laughs> of <okay."> course. <laughs> I, I want to, but I didn't know how big, you know, Sasha was at that time. And so I was just like, okay, this is another project that I'm jumping in. Uh, and then I went back to Mozambique. Then at the office, Sasha communicated and then we changed the email and then it, it, it just happened. Uh, I just got to know what I was, you know, entering into when I went to the office because the office super was, I mean, is super big. And there was a lot of people also working in there, and I, I got shocked. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what's going on in here? So many people, people running with papers here and there. What's going on? You mean uh, this, is, this was the office of the company, you the, mean? Yeah, well, the, okay, of Sasha yeah. Waltz. Yeah, we, I did that creation, and then we were touring a lot with, with that piece. And then she invited me to do another pro uh, uh, project, which uh, Zambrano was um, involved. Uh, this jagged uh, and form. It was kind of like you know, sad piece with mixed with improvisation. And this is when I when I felt more connected to Sasha because you know she works with set material very strong, but also she has gaps for improvisation. So you can you can improvise in some points with specific tasks, specific times, and so on. And that's when I identify myself. I I slowly notice that I love to improvise but I needed to work in set material. And that was a perfect place to, to do that. And yeah, I kept on going with uh, um, improvisation and set material. We did the second production in 2008. She asked if um, I wanted to join the, con uh, the company. And I said, yes. So I had, I had a, um, a contract from 2008 until 2014. I was um, a permanent member of the company. And there are like more projects uh, were happening, but I asked her that I wanted to keep the connection with Zambrano. So yeah. if I was not so busy, then I would go take flying low, passing through 
that was super important for me not to lose. Do you still freelance uh, in Germany or in other countries? Do you still get other projects or do you still huh. only tour with uh, Sasha and maybe Zambrano sometimes and only teach? That's when the chaos begins. Uh, uh, because the more, the more I was with Sasha, the, the less I had, I, you know, I had less time. So okay. what happened is that the work with Zambrano started to get a little bit less. I was meeting him less, but I was making sure that I, need, I, 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 I would meet him. But it was, it was just reducing. It was not as much as when we started. Uh, then, like I said, we fin I finished a permanent contract in 2014. Then I entered a freelance world. Uh, the productions that I did that I did before, they were still running. So I had to go back to the company to you know to do those As repertoire. A collaborator. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I I decided not to do the following productions from 2014 on. And that's when I focused also more in the depth movement, which is, again, I was not meeting Zambrano so, so much because I was like, okay, this thing needs my attention. So I'm, I'm going to give a little bit more. And so depth movement started to get on the road. And so I had depth movement, I had Zambrano and I had Sasha. And on top of it, I had choreographies that collaborations that I was doing with other musicians, other dancers, and so I had all this that I needed to organize. So uh, freelance became my full contract. And every um, week I was doing uh, a workshop in here. And then sometimes I would go to assist Zombrano because it was one thing that I, you know, I really needed. He's like a book for me. Like if I'm a bit lost, so I just, I just go there and look for the page. And, three. Exactly. and then, okay, now I can go. And so, and then at the same time, I was doing um, the repertoires with Sasha and uh, just uh, improvisations that she would organize. Uh, she would call a couple of artists and then one oh, evening. Like sessions. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so, and I, I, I was also doing collaborations. I would do duets and one of them was Linda Capitanea that, you know, we did it, I think, mm -hmm. 2018, we mm -hmm. started. And uh, with another uh, Haushka, a uh, pianist, a uh, yeah. film composer in 2013. And all this was, it was just there, not so like frequent, but you know, here and there. And so the accumulation of the whole thing kept me busy. And therefore I just continued with the freelance. Okay. So just uh, to go back a bit to the class, to the depth movement, uh, could you tell us what is it you're looking for when you come to a class? What do you expect from the students? What do you want to give them? The, the, the first thing that I, I want or, or I wish is progress. Mm -hmm. uh, when I enter, I will say it in a personal um, uh, level, when I enter in a class, I want to get out with something that I didn't have when I, you know, when I arrived in there. And, and so when I see all the participants coming to, to the depth movement, I try to analyze what they have in that moment and then try to uh, guide them with whatever they have, guide them to, towards the next thing and the next thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it always starts with what they have. So um, if you, let's say if in, in, during the class, there is some sort of like repetitions that occur in your system. Sure. Then I would kind of like bring to your attention and ask you to break that repetition, creating something else, and then go back to that repetition and mix them to see if they, you know, we can create a third thing. So, and on top of it, I mean, if I will talk about in details of the, the, the elements that the that movement has, um, I mean, uh, just to mention a few, uh, I, I love precision. I love to, you know, to uh, work also with the rhythms and I love to work with tiredness and, yeah. and see how we can um, play with it more than surrender to it. And so, um, like we, 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 I also love, I also love physicality. So through physicality, you know, we start shaping or, or finding these elements, how, how precise can we be right now? How uh, not precise can we be? 
and how can we play with the rhythms? What, what is the rhythm that I have the most or that I have the, the, the tendency to activate the most? And, and so on. So at the end of the, the, the whole uh, workshop, um, the participants get out with, um, with a bit of understanding uh, precision in their uh, movements, not mine, but whatever they imagine, what, whatever they can produce, precision, and the rhythms, variations of the rhythms of, in their movements, and how to be in the studio and go one full hour playing with the tiredness, building up their stamina, uh, building you know, more um, a power or strings in their movement, and taking all those elements uh, uh, outside or to other places, use, it, use them if they are asked. You, you don't have to move very fast if it's not necessary in that moment. If it's, you need it, then you activate it because you know that is also part of uh, something that you practice. And that's what I try to give um, in the depth and movement workshop. Your work is so much based on energy and this uh, motivational aspect and inspirational aspect. And you help us break our limits. So my last question would be, how do you find your determination day to day? How do you break your limits? Like, <laughs> what, what keeps you going? All right, music keeps me going. Um, other dancers, uh, painting, uh, movies, uh, co colors, just like, you know, colors, mm -hmm. plants, food, uh, 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 cleaning, um, <laughs> Uh, uh, audience, stage, light, uh, what else? Uh, like, there's so many things that make me um, still uh, continue. But yes, there are days that I enter in the studio and I feel, oh, today I don't think I have that strength. And I just look at the site. I look to my neighbor, which is probably one of the participants, mm -hmm. and that participant gives me something and then I build it up and I send it back. So um, knowing that there are people out there that also um, wish to move or to engage into physicality is, you know, is one of the things that motivates me. Also, other teachers, friends of, um, of mine, that when you know when we, we just talk shortly in the social media, or sometimes we meet in the big festivals and we just make. A fan of each other, and or we just just laugh, and you know <laughs> we will be, you know we have this conversation, random conversation, and that afterwards, you know, like I arrive at home and I'm like, wow, wow, I wish I could be in the studio right now to do something with what just happened. Thank you for these insights. Thank <laughs> you for being here with us, mostly, and see you tomorrow breaking <laughs> some more limits. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank it's you. a it's a pleasure being here, and thank you for the for the invitation. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it's such an amazing group that you put it together. It's, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. Hopefully we meet again. Thank you. <laughs>